have just a little bit of an addiction. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today's video, we are celebrating another strange holiday and that is Buy a Book Day. September 7th is Buy a Book Day and I don't know if it's specifically meant to go out and buy a book on this day, but I took it to mean celebrate that day by, on lots of days leading up to that day, buy books. So I thought a fun video to do would be to do a book thrift, thrifted book haul? Is that how you would put it? Basically, Dan and I went thrift shopping a couple days ago and we specifically looked through all of the books to find some good thrifted books that we wanted slash needed to add to our collection slash wanted to upgrade some of the books we already had. And I thought it'd be fun to do a little haul video and show you those books that we got and why we got them. All right, so jumping right into it, the first group of books are children's books. Now, Dan and I do not have any children. We want to someday, we are not there yet. But something that we have been doing for the last few years is growing a library of children's books. So when we do have kids, we have a lot of the classics that we liked growing up ourselves. And also then we just have a lot of good children's books. So the first one that I found is this one, and it is If You Take a Mouse to School. And I have several of these series. This is by Laura Numeroff, and the other books, I have a few already. That's If You Give a Pig a Pancake, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, and I think there's also If You Give a Cat a Cupcake. So I have those, and I saw this one, and I didn't realize that this was one of them, the If You Take a Mouse to School. If you take a mouse to school, he'll ask for your lunchbox. When you give him your lunchbox, he'll want a sandwich and a snack for later. The next book that we got, Dan found, and it is Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. And this is by Judith Vjorst, I think is how you pronounce it. I'm not for sure. Dan found this one and he said he enjoyed it. I've actually never read this, so I will probably be skimming through it pretty soon here, but he thought it was a pretty good book and it looks like it is actually a series. I didn't know that. In the carpool, Mrs. Gibson let Becky have a seat by the window. Audrey and Elliot got seats by the window, too. I said I was being scrunched. I said I was being smushed. I said, if I don't get a seat by the window, I am going to be carsick. No one even answered. I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. The last children's book that we picked up is actually a treasury of different Curious George books. So this I found, and I love Curious George. I think they're great little reads, they're fun, and this actually has eight different stories in it, and this is by Margaret and H.A. Ray. So picked up all of these because I think treasuries are a great way to go as far as not wanting to take up a ridiculous amount of space on your bookshelf, but also having a lot of books that you can reach for almost at the same time. This is George. He was a good little monkey and always very curious. Today is a special day, the man with the yellow hat told George at breakfast. I have a surprise planned and lots to do to get ready. You can help me by staying out of trouble. George was happy to help. The next one that we found is kind of a treasury collection and it is a Calvin and Hobbes book. It's called The Days Are Just Packed and it's Calvin and Hobbes by Bill Watterson. And this is one of the collections out of many, many, many that there are, and we own a lot of these. We actually own a complete Calvin and Hobbes collection where we have three hardback books of all of the comic strips that Bill Watterson ever made for the series. But then we also have a lot of these like individual smaller books of collections that he'd put together. So this was one of them that we did not have, and Dan really likes having these on hand, so we went ahead and picked that up as well. Just look at that dance sequence that they have happening on the back. Who wouldn't want to get this book? Next up we have this Norman Rockwell illustrator book, and Dan saw this, and it is essentially just a history of Norman Rockwell pictures and the thought process through a lot of these pictures and just a ton of Norman Rockwell history and it's really really cool 
and Dan saw this and picked it up because he thought it would be a good book to have in the bathroom for bathroom reading material because we do enjoy having books in the bathroom. We have a lot of really strange, interesting books in there and he thought this would be a really fun one to add to that. And so young Rockwell went the rounds, trying out his schemes for selling, learning the tricks of the trade. Gradually he disposed of more and more work, and bit by bit his already substantial reputation grew. Surprised by Hope by N.T. Wright is actually a book that we already own and I'm currently reading through it right now, but it's a very, very good book. Dan's read it at least once and really enjoys it, references it a lot. And when we saw it at the thrift store, we went ahead and picked up a second copy because it's one of those books that we like to have on hand. So if somebody we think might enjoy it comes by or we talk to them, that we can easily hand them a copy and say, here, take your time reading it because this is a second copy. We already have one and you can read this at your own leisure. And that way then there's no feeling of people trying to hurry to get it back. We don't feel like we've lost a book by loaning it out and then something happens and we don't get it back. So we like when we see books like this that we do really enjoy and that we know other people might enjoy. We like picking up extra copies so that we can give them out to people. We may note at this point, as an aside, but an important one, how impossible it is to account for the early Christian belief in Jesus as Messiah without the resurrection. We have evidence of several other Jewish movements, messianic movements, prophetic movements, during the one or two centuries on either side of Jesus' public career. Routinely, they ended with the violent death of the central figure. Members of the movement, assuming they got away with their own skins, then faced a choice, either give up the struggle or find a new messiah. Had the early Christians wanted to go the latter route, they had an obvious candidate, James, the Lord's brother, a great and devout teacher, the central figure in the early Jerusalem church. But nobody ever imagined that James might be the Messiah. Josephus describes him somewhat contemptuously, but echoing the language people must have used for him as the brother of the so-called Messiah. Dan also found this book. It is The Revolt Against Dualism and the inquiry concerning the existency of ideas. And it's by Arthur O. Lovejoy. I don't really know what's in this book at all. Um, this is definitely a book that Dan saw he thought would be interesting, so he picked up. And I guarantee if I saw this on a shelf, I would have just glanced over it and continued on looking through the shelf. So maybe Dan one day will explain more about what's in it and if he enjoys it or not, but this is definitely a Dan book and not a me book. I propose in these lectures to review the course and to attempt to estimate the results of a movement of thought which has been, on the whole, the most characteristic and most ambitious philosophic effort of our generation in the English-speaking part of the world. The last quarter century, it may fairly confidently be predicted, will have for future historians of philosophy a distinctive interest and instructiveness as the age of the great revolt against dualism, though it is possible that they may prefer to describe this uprising as a phase of a wider revolt of the 20th century against the 17th. These next two books, I'm not going to go into detail very much at all because they're books by two different YouTubers. There is Girl Online by Zoe Sugg, and also This Book Loves You by PewDiePie. And I got them for a future video that I want to do, and didn't. I already own the Girl Online series, so I already owned this, but I was glad to pick up a second copy to use for this upcoming video. And then I saw this, and because it's a YouTuber, I picked it up because it pertains to that video. But that's the reason I picked these up, not really to necessarily add to our collection. The next book I picked up is Sue Grafton, Why is for Yesterday. And I have almost the entire series of these books in my collection already. Sue Grafton is a murder, is a mystery writer, mostly murder mysteries. I've read a few of her books in the series that are not murders, but they are mysteries. I'm pretty sure anyway. It's been a while since I've read one of her books, so don't quote me if I'm wrong. She wrote a book for every letter of the alphabet, A through Y, and I say A through Y and not Z because she unfortunately passed away before finishing writing Z. So 
Y was the last one that she published. And so as of finding this at the thrift store, I have every letter of the alphabet except for X. So I thought that was a very good find because this is still relatively a newer book. I found an amazing parking spot one door down from my studio apartment, which cheered me to no end. I let myself in through the squeaking gate, feeling a rare optimism. I stopped in my tracks. The sidewalk just inside the gate was piled high with junk. A backpack, a sleeping bag, a waterproof ground pad, a duffel, a pup tent, and a portable wheelchair. Plus two brown bags stuffed with clothing that smelled sooty even from where I stood. And then I also found Awakenings by Oliver Sacks. I was very excited to find this because the first Oliver Sacks book I read was The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat. And I borrowed that from my sister-in-law because she thought that I would enjoy it and she was absolutely right and I thoroughly enjoyed it. All about case studies of neurology and the brain and different diseases related to the brain and things not working correctly and misfiring and shutting down and seizing in certain areas of the brain. It's absolutely fascinating. So I thoroughly loved that book reading it and I have it on Audible. I've hooked, got my mom hooked onto it reading it. So when I saw this by Oliver Sacks, I thought absolutely I need to read this because it sounds fascinating as well. Nearly half the survivors became liable to extraordinary crises in which they might experience, for example, the simultaneous and virtually instantaneous onset of Parkinsonism, catatonia, tics, obsessions, hallucinations, block, increased suggestibility or negativism, and 30 or 40 other problems. Such crises would last a few minutes or hours and then disappear as suddenly as they had come. The next set of books are a handful of classics that we found. The first one being Selected Poems of Emily Dickinson, and this I just thought would be a wonderful collection to our library and our growing section of classic literature. Dear March, come in. How glad I am. I looked for you before. Put down your hat. You must have walked. How out of breath you are. Dear March, how are you? And the rest? Did you leave nature well? Oh, March, come right upstairs with me. I have so much to tell. I got your letter and the birds. The maples never knew that you were coming, I declare. How red their faces grew. But March, forgive me, in all those hills you left for me to hew. There was no purple suitable. You took it all with you. Who knocks? That's April. Lock the door. I will not be pursued. He stayed away a year to call when I am occupied. But trifles look so trivial as soon as you have come that blame is just as dear as praise and praise as mere as blame. And then I got The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. I already own an abridged version of this book, and it's been on my reading list for a while, but I've been putting it off, one, because of time, and two, because it was the abridged version, and I knew I would be missing out on parts of it, and I wanted to read it in its entirety and enjoy the whole thing. So when I found an unabridged version, which you can tell by how massive this book is that it is very much unabridged, I was very excited to pick it up and add it to the collection as well. We will not try to give the reader any idea of that tetrahedron-like nose, of that horseshoe-shaped mouth, of that small left eye overhung by a bushy red eyebrow, while the right eye was completely hidden by a monstrous wart, of those uneven, broken teeth with sad gaps here and there like the battlements of a fortress, of that callous lip over which one of these teeth projected like an elephant's tusk, of that forked chin, and especially of the expression pervading all this, that mixture of malice, amazement, and melancholy. Imagine, if you can, that comprehensive sight. And finally, we got a very nice hardback copy of Herman Melville's Moby Dick. And again, we already own, I think, one or two copies of Moby Dick, but they are paperback. This is in pristine condition. Like I said, it's hardback. So this was more of an upgrading a book that we already had rather than a buying a new book. But now we have more copies of Moby Dick that if somebody comes over and they're like, hey, I've never read Moby Dick, we can be like, here, here's a copy you can just have. 
It was just between daybreak and sunrise of the morning of the second day, when they were washing down the decks, that a stupid Tenerife man, drawing water in the main chains, all at once shouted out, There she rolls! There she rolls! Jesu, what a whale! It was Moby Dick. Moby Dick, cried Don Sebastian. Saint Dominic, sir, sailor, but do whales have christenings? Whom you call Moby Dick? A very white and famous and most deadly immortal monster, Don. But that would be too long a story. And then the last book I got is a cookbook. It is Busy Family Recipes, dozens of ideas for hearty weeknight meals, crockpot edition. So I have been trying to find more crockpot recipes to try. I've been trying to get into freezer recipes a little bit. I saw this and I thought this would be a great thing to look through to get ideas for potentially some meals I can freeze. And also, winters in Illinois last about six months, so I'm going to have ample amount of time to cook lots of slow cooker meals, so I'm very excited about that. So we have lemon mint red potatoes, Mediterranean tomato, oregano, and orzo soup, Hearty chili mac, no fuss macaroni and cheese, Indian style curried drumsticks. That looks amazing. Can you see that? That looks delicious. So those are all of the books that we picked up at the thrift store. Let me know if any of them sound really interesting to you. This was, I think, two separate days of thrift store hunting and we found all of these books. We don't usually come out with this many books when we go to the thrift store, but sometimes we just get really lucky and we end up finding a ton of good books. So this I think was an especially good haul, whereas usually they are much smaller hauls or sometimes we're a little more picky about the books that we're adding to our collection or not. Let me know when you go to the thrift store what sort of things you look for if you do go and check out the books. If you don't, I highly recommend that you do because sometimes there are absolute gems in there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss any new videos that I post because I do really enjoy posting videos related to strange holidays and working video ideas into what those holidays are. So I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you next time. Bye! On September 7th, which is buy a book day, go out, buy yourself a book, treat yourself, and let me know what you got. Because I am curious to know what your guys' book preferences are, what sort of things you like to read. Do you like murder mysteries or sci-fi or history or cartoon, manga? I'm, I'm curious. I want to know. 